Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. With this video, we are going to start a new playlist called Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios Playlist. The videos present in this playlist will be helpful if you are working as a data engineer or if you want to switch your career to data engineering platform. So thereby you have to deal with few tasks related to data ingestion or data movement or you have to perform some data transformations. So for these activities, the best tool available in Azure is Azure Data Factory. Okay. So in this video, we are going to learn a simple use case where we want to load the data from SQL table to CSV file. And in that process, we will learn how to provide dynamic name to the target file based on pipeline run date in Azure Data Factory. Okay. So let's understand the use case in details. So we have to provide file name to the target file based on date functions in ADF pipelines. Okay. So our table name in the source that is in SQL Server is month revenue till date. Let me show you this table in the SQL Server. So you can see this uh, table is present. It has some data related to revenue for each month. So th let's not uh, go in deep into the data present. But our use case is we want to load that table into CSV file in this format. So the file name should be dynamically generated based on the pipeline run date. Okay. So that means the file name should be this table name underscore starting. Then it should generate previous month end date. Okay. So suppose we are on August uh, 14th. So that is today's date. If we are running the pipeline on today's date, the file name should be uh, the table name underscore starting 31st July because for August the previous month end date is 31st July okay and then underscore ending okay this uh, should be a string appended here and then today's date that is when the pipeline is running so the run date then underscore uh, then dot csv okay so this is how the file should be present in the target in the ADLS account that is Azure Data Lake storage so basically from business use case perspective just think like this file is containing data starting from 31st July that is last date of previous month till today when the pipeline is running okay similarly if I run the pipeline tomorrow that is on 15th August then the file will be having all the data starting from 31st July that is the previous month and date till uh, tomorrow tomorrow's date okay so it should give this file if I run the date, uh, if I run the pipeline tomorrow. Similarly, if I run the pipeline on 1st of September, then the pipeline, uh, then the file name should be uh, table name underscore starting 31st August because the previous uh, month end date will be 31st August if I run on any date of September. Okay. So this should be the starting date and then the ending date should be the date on which the pipeline is running. So if I run on 1st September, it should be 1st September here. If I run on 15th September, it should be 15th September here. Similarly, if I run on 15th October, the starting date will be 30 September. That is the previous month end date. And here the end date should be 15th October when the pipeline is running. Similarly, if I run on next year, that is 31st January 2023, then here it should be 31st December 2022 and the end date should be 31st, December, uh, 31st Jan 2023, which is the current date when the pipeline is running at that point. So uh, for now, we will not be able to test any of these scenarios, but we will implement this and we will test if this is working for the first use case or not. Okay. So let me go to the ADF pipeline. So let me create a new pipeline here. And to move any data or to copy any data from source to target, we have a tool or we have an activity called copy data activity. Okay, which comes under move and transform tab. So here we need to provide the source and sync information. So let me create a source data set pointing to the Azure SQL table. So let me hit on new data set and let me and here let me select Azure SQL database and let me select the linked service which is already created in my case. If I open this, you can see I have provided all the server details. Here this is the server name uh, and this is the database name then for authentication I am giving my username and password okay and in the table name let me edit this and give the table name manually let me copy the table name from here and let me import schema 
and let me click on OK. So, this will create the source data set for us. Similarly, we have to create sync data set. So, let me go to sync and let me create a sync data set which will be pointing to my ADLS Gen 2 Azure Data Lake Gen 2. So, let me click on OK and here I have to provide the CSV format okay, as we discussed in the requirement and let me select the link service which is pointing to my uh, storage account. I have provided a storage account key and the URL. Here we need to select the file path. First thing we need to give file system then directory then file name. So, file system is nothing but the container name and directory means folder name. If we do not provide the file name it will auto generate some file name for us that will be some dummy values given to the file name. Okay. So, let me browse here and let me choose a container from the available containers. So, let me give demo for now. If we do not have the uh, containers available you can just type it like here. Let me give output demo for now okay. and in the folder name let me give output, uh, output folder and for the file name I am keeping it blank for now because we have to dynamically generate this file name. So, uh, once this data set will be created we will use some date function to create the file name. Okay. Here we need to select if the first row should be treated as header or not. So, we want to treat the column name as the header. So, let me select this checkbox. Okay. And now in import schema option let me select none because it is the target file. We are not going to import any schema for that. Okay. So, let me click on okay. Now, let me reopen this data set. In the file name we are going to generate the file names dynamically based on some uh, pipeline run date. right? So, let me hit on add dynamic content and let me start writing the uh, expression here. Okay. So, with the help of the functions available here we are going to generate the file names. So, first of all what we need we want to give the table name as the file name first as we have to concatenate so many things. So, let me use concat function first. So, there is something called concat function. Okay. So, what this function does is it combines any number of strings together. Okay. So, let me use this function first and here let me provide the table name in the hard coded value as of now. So, it should be month revenue till date. So, let me copy the table name from here. Let me paste it here and then it should have uh, it should have underscore starting. So, let me provide that as a string itself starting. So, after this we have to make use of some date function to get previous month end date. Okay. So, how can we do that? So, let me first make use of UTC now which will give us current date value. Okay. So, here let me give comma and then UTC now. So, this will give today's date that is 14th August. Now, on top of this there is some function called start of day, start of hour, start of month. Okay. Is there something called end of day? There is nothing called end end of day or end of hour. So, uh, what we can do is we can make use of start of month for this current date. So, once I clicked on this what it will do is it will give us 1st of August in our case. Why? Because today is 14th August. So, it will give the date that is representing the start of current month which will be 1st August. Okay. Then if we subtract 1 from this date that is start of current month then we will get end date of previous month right. So, what we can do is there is some function called add days or add hours or add minutes. So, these kinds of functions are there. Is there anything called subtract? So, there is something called subtract from time. There is something called subtract but this is a math function we cannot use it in date uh, functions in in date calculation. Okay. So, let me use add days here and let me give minus 1 because we are subtracting 1 from the from the start of the month. Okay. So, let me close this. So, we are good till this point. Now, let me go back to the presentation and after this value what we want is underscore ending. So, let me add it as a string. So, here let me give comma then under quotes we will give underscore ending. Okay. And after this let me give another comma and here we would we want to fetch the current date which is UTC now. So, let me give UTC now again. Okay. So, yeah just this function I am giving and then we have to give dot csv for the file name. So, let me give that in a hard coded 
string value like dot csv in the quotes okay so we are good now let's run the pipeline and see if we are getting the desired file name in output demo folder or not so let me go back to the pipeline and let me hit on debug so let's wait for the pipeline execution to be completed yeah so pipeline run is completed now let me go to the adls account and let me hit on refresh to see if output demo folder got generated or not you can see this folder got generated on today's date and here inside output folder you can see we got the file name so let me hover on this to see the full file name or let me expand this let me expand so uh, you can see the value for this file is uh, table name underscore starting and then it is giving 31st july 2022 value and underscore ending and then today's date but the format of the dates are not as we expected here right we wanted to have 31st then july 2022 in the string format so let me go back to the pipeline again and here let me uh, give the file format explicitly so here in the add days function itself let me provide the file format as wh what we wanted that is dd then mmm yyyy right this is what we want first it should give dd that is date then mmm that is three characters for uh, the month and then yyyy so we are good here and then again for the uh, current date also we need the same format so here let me add something called format date time so this function will give us the date value in the desired format okay so let me uh, click on this and here let me give comma and then let me give dd mmm yyyy okay let me close this and let me hit on okay and let me uh, delete this file from the previous run and let me uh, rerun the pipeline again so let's wait for the pipeline execution to be completed then we will check if we are getting the desired result or not so the pipeline execution is completed now let me refresh the file here and you can see the file is coming as uh, month revenue till date this is the table name underscore starting and then 31st july 2022 this is what we wanted 31st july 2022 underscore ending here we are getting 14 august 2022 dot csv so we are good so if i run the same pipeline tomorrow it will give me uh, till this point it will give the same result but after that instead of 14 august it will give 15 august so similarly for other dates as well it will be working okay so this is how we will create the dynamic file name for the target file so that's it for this video guys i hope you like the content this is a very simple use case but going forward we will be covering more such kind of use cases related to adf so please keep supporting this channel by hitting on like button and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet thank you so much